a dire new environmental warning about carbon dioxide emissions, and it's not coming from an environmental group. It's from the International Energy Agency, an independent group formed in the 1970s to keep the world's supply of oil flowing. And it now advises world governments on energy policy. Their report says governments must act now to cut CO2 emissions and that globally those emissions must be net zero by 2050 to stave off a dangerous and potentially catastrophic global temperature increase. And they're calling for dramatic action, including a phase out of all gas powered cars and trucks, an end to new approvals for coal fired power plants and no more new oil or gas fields. As you might expect, all of those proposals will face staunch political opposition, but before it all gets bogged down in politics, we wanted to dig deeper into the science and the environmental reasoning behind it. For that, we turn to Chip Cummins. Chip is a renewable energy and clean technology expert. He's also chairman and CEO of the American Renewable Energy Institute. Chip, let's start with the worst case scenario and work backwards. The IEA says the world needs to be net zero on carbon dioxide emissions by 2050 or else. What's the or else? Well, right now we're experiencing some feedback loops that are uh, coming in the forms of uh, extreme wildfires, uh, rising sea levels, the ice that's melting in both the polar areas of our world that um, <clears throat> are creating devastating effects. And so that's just the beginning of what we might experience if we left uh, the fossil fuels uh, burning at present rates. So, so what does being net zero on CO2 emissions mean? We can't get rid of everything that emits carbon dioxide because that includes humans and animals. What we're talking about here is the, uh, the burning of fossil fuels primarily and um, that's carbon is not the only greenhouse gas exacerbating the problem. There's also the methane coming from how we raise, you know, for instance, the cattle. But the reality is that we have uh, the anthropocentric or the human forcing of, of the carbon is destabilizing the planet. Uh, for the last 10,000 years, we had a very stable climate, only about a fluctuation of one degrees C. But for the 100,000 years preceding that, when humans were still here, uh, it, there was wild fluctuations and it would go, you know, 10 degrees C uh, plus or minus in a decade. So it was very tough to live, but it stabilized 10,000 years ago and that allowed for uh, modern civilization as we know it, uh, all of recorded history. But now we've changed that dynamic. That's called the Holocene. We've crossed the threshold into the Anthropocene. So we have heard reports about how dangerous our climate situation is before. Why is this report different? What does it say coming from this particular group, the IEA? The IEA, the uh, International uh, Energy Agency, is a, is a very uh, a solid group, not uh, liberal or conservative, but rather just right on the issue of energy. And the fact that they're concerned uh, and, and releasing this report means that <clears throat> we have literally a window of about five to seven years right now to remain within uh, the remaining carbon budget of about 300 billion tons. We're presently burning about 40 billion tons per year. And since the Industrial Revolution, we've put up approximately uh, <clears throat> two and a half trillion tons. And so uh, it's, it's deeply concerning when the IEA comes out with a report that suggests that we must cease all oil and gas exploration. And we have to also uh, shut down all development of new coal plants and actually uh, systematically shut down the ones that are now existing and transition over to renewable energy. The good news is, is that we have enough time to do this. Uh, the, the, uh, the impetus is to act. Well, that's my next question, because one of their recommendations is to phase out gas powered cars and trucks. But we're nowhere close to 100 percent electric vehicles. There's two million of them out of 287 million total vehicles just in the U.S. And as for those power sources, there are real fears that we won't be able to keep the lights on, given the current state of our green energy development. We always hear that if we give it our all, we can get there. But Boy, that's a real big leap of faith for a whole lot of people right now. That's true. And, and the reality is that uh, we have to keep the lights on. We need to have uh, 
uh, cold beer and hot showers, uh, to quote Amory Lovins, my good friend from the Rocky Mountain Institute. But the reality is that we also have the ability to make the transition in a way that's going to uh, raise the standards for living for everybody and add, I believe, tens of thousands, if not uh, hundreds and even millions of new jobs uh, fixing the problem. Uh, as my good friend over at the Department of Energy, Jigger Shaw, has said in his book, Creating Climate Wealth, this is the greatest wealth creation opportunity that we'll ever pre uh, present to a modern man, and um, it will raise the living standard for everybody, but we have to get on with it. Finally, Chip, this report is a global call to action. The U.S. and the EU have both pledged to get to net zero CO2 emissions by 2050, just as the IEA suggests. But we can't force other countries, think China, India, Russia, and others, to do the same. Or can we? How much pressure can we apply? Well, we can lead by example. I think that President Biden has made a very strong move forward when he convened the world leaders uh, on Earth Day, and we had this uh, dialogue, and that we can also show the world, um, as President Biden did yesterday uh, in the uh, visit to the Ford factory, where he drove a, an, a fully electric F-150, the most popular vehicle selling in America, that this can be very economically beneficial. And I think that the EU and China and Russia and uh, all of our uh, uh, global friends will also see that and, and take the lead because it will only benefit them. I mean, really, at the end of the day, who doesn't want clean air, clean water, and clean food for their children and the future? Chip Cummins is an expert in renewable energy and clean technology. He's also chairman and CEO of the American Renewable Energy Institute. Chip, appreciate a few minutes and good luck with your efforts. Thank you so much. Quick update, the House has enough votes to pass the bill to establish a commission to study the Capitol riot. About 30 Republicans crossing leadership to vote yes. The measure now moves to the Senate where its fate is less certain. Up next, gun violence in America is an epidemic and it's taking a huge toll on our children even after they survive a shooting. After the break, the author of a new book that explains how devastating it is for kids after they witness gun violence with their own eyes.